So the water-cooled spindle has been working really well, but it's driving me nuts. I have no flow indicator. With this black tubing, I can't see into it. So uh, I picked up this guy. It's just a wheel. It's going to rotate with the fluid. Um, so it comes with these G1 quarter threads. So I had to pick up these G1 quarter compression fittings that match the tubing size that I'm using. And so uh, essentially we're just going to put this guy in line here on the other side. So here's the setup. I got this tray and then I put down this sheet of vinyl that I have. It's like scrap uh, to protect the MDF. <laughs> Obviously don't want to get any water on that. The plan here is to like cut off some of these zip ties uh, to free it up and then open up one of these uh, fittings and then drain into the pan. <laughs> so in the interest of full disclosure, here's the mess I made. So you can see here, there's a little bit of water here, a little bit of water here, Whole bunch of water in the tray luckily nothing outside the tray but anyway uh, here's the quality of the water so when that went in it was totally clear definitely something going on so I took a closer look at this liquid it's definitely not algae or anything biological um, it seems to be a really fine precipitate that's uh, suspended in this solution it doesn't fall out uh, over time so I'm just going to presume it's evidence of galvanic cor corrosion. And so I'm going to swap out the coolant uh, with something that has an additive to mitigate this process. So the automotive coolant industry is kind of maddening. <laughs> um, you're a better person than me if you can figure out the difference between the actual science and the marketing and all this junk. Uh, it appears there's three big flavors of uh, coolant out there. There's the traditional stuff we use for decades, and then there's this oat stuff, uh, which I think gets mixed up with Dex Cool, which is a notorious nightmare for General Motors cars. And then the latest and greatest seems to be the hybrid oat, which is organic acid technology. Um, so anyway, reading the back of these jugs is completely useless. Uh, your best bet is to maybe look at an SDS sheet, the safety data, to get a better sense of what's inside them, but they're still going to hide all their information. So I think uh, if you're actually trying to understand the chemistry, there's really no way to tell which of these products is best for this application. So I'm going to start with the oat stuff and see how it goes. I think it can go bad in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, it can react with the tubing, uh, brass fittings, aluminum fittings, uh, some plastics. I mean, who knows? Um, but at least now I have a window into the system, so I'll be able to see if uh, something starts to go wrong. All right, so managed to uh, fill it up with the antifreeze or coolant and uh, bleed off the air. I will say it's a bit fussy to bleed air out of these systems. Um, I keep finding myself, I, I need to open up this plug on the reservoir and fill it manually with this syringe. Um, so I'm sucking up the coolant from the container and then directly injecting it into the reservoir. Because even though I'm at this high point filling, it seems to fill the system, but for some reason the reservoir just gets a big air bolus in it. It's probably because the both of the lines leaving the reservoir are on the bottom. So anyway, I keep having to open this up and fill it manually. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, if any of you guys know that this is a terribly stupid idea to put coolant, automotive coolant, in a system like this, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, I'm going to try this out and uh, see how it goes. Thanks for watching.